Hello everyone. Welcome back to Mastering GLSL in Touch Designer. My name is Lake Heckman and I am taking you all through this course. Thank you for coming back and for making it this far with me through the, the course so far. I think we've covered some really good topics. Um, for those that have taken a break or are joining late, I'm a new media artist exploring how technology alters human perception and how we connect with each other. I do this through creating interactive installations and architectural facades that draw on these generative processes um, from nature that we see all around us. And uh, yeah, I'm here sharing a lot of the techniques that I've built myself uh, to be able to implement some of these projects uh, of which here's just a quick selection. Um, all of these are using techniques that I cover in this course um, and will cover in the future and also cover um, with a ton of the other tutorials that I have on my Patreon already. Um, so this is a little bit about me and without further ado, we can jump into things. This is uh, our 11th lesson or lesson number 10, image filtering basics. As I mentioned, we have done a lot already. Um, we've all kind of started from the foundational concepts of parallel computing. We talked about everything from how to texture, uh, how to sample textures, how to use colors, how to draw shapes, a lot of noise, a lot of domain manipulation, um, fractals. And now we're moving into what I like to think of as some of the more practical applications of GLSL. A lot of the stuff before has been pretty conceptual and generally necessary, foundationally, but maybe not the most fun. Uh, this is also going to be a little bit on the foundational side, but I am comfortable saying that the lessons from here on out are going to be a lot more interesting and the results are gonna be a lot more compelling also. So with that said, uh, let's jump into the slides for today before we get going on our touch designer. So first things first, what is image filtering and what do I mean when I say that? Well, image filtering is a process. It is the process of altering a texture uh, by mapping some mathematical operation to each pixel. And in short, that's it. We basically just run a shader over every pixel in our image. That shader does some process that's known as applying a filter. And it might use information about just our single pixel. We might use information about other pixels and uh, the result, the output, is going to be something totally different. And so that is what image filtering is. It's super, super useful. And I think it'll make a lot more sense when we look at some common image filters that I am highly confident you have seen already. Uh, so blur, super common, right? Um, this one is edge, also super common, a Sobel filter. Uh, here we have slit scans, which are maybe a little hard to see over the stream. Um, or sorry, scan lines, which are a little hard to see over the stream. But um, you can see if you download the slides. This is like an emboss filter. Um, and then we have a chromatic aberration. And this is a sharpen filter, so kind of the opposite of blur. Um, so... These are just six common examples. There are truly more than we could ever talk about uh, in a single course. But when we talk about image filters, uh, this is what we're talking about. And what we're gonna be doing in the rest of this lesson is understanding kind of what concepts are required to be able to define these filters and set up some of your own, as well as uh, how to implement some common filters that are used just kind of in computer graphics all around. So, then we have, uh, okay, so what are some big high-level categories, types of image filters? Well, color grading is probably the most widely used, and that's very simple. It can be as simple as brightness, saturation, gamma, etc. It could be as complex as doing very specific color grading cube maps, uh, lookup tables. Color grading can really get detailed. There's entire careers that are just dedicated to color grading. Uh, but it is a very common type of image filter. Post-processing is, let's say, maybe a slightly more general version, uh, which could include things like blurring or blooming, um, scan lines, any sort of filter that's applied after um, an image is created that might not fall into just color grading. For example, scan lines 
which are horizontal lines across the image. Uh, these guys over here. Scan lines are definitely not color grading, um, and they definitely don't fall into our other categories as well, so they're broadly in post-processing. Um, the other categories are a little bit more specific. Domain distortion. So that's going to be things like a slit scan, making swirls, a barrel distort. A lot of those domain manipulation techniques where we take the X and stretch it, take the Y, stretch, compress, twist, warp, um, all of that stuff that we've done in our domain when looking at, let's say, noise functions or drawing shapes, etc. Um, all of that can be thought of as a different type of image filter. And then finally, convolution kernels are another very large category of image filters. These are the most advanced, and we're going to talk most about these in our next lesson on image filters. But I wanted to mention them for completeness here. And convolution kernels encompass those filters like edge detection, blur, emboss. Basically, any filter that's going to require information about more than a single pixel to be able to calculate the filter result. Um, so, you know, a blur, as we'll talk about in just a second, uh, or here, rather, a simple blur. Uh, a blur filter works by averaging nearby pixels to get a given pixel's output color. So a box blur is the most simple example of this. You can think about using a neighborhood of pixels as a box. So if we have our single pixel right here, then a box around it would be these eight surrounding pixels. And you can see this in the resulting texture is going to be basically a value that is the average of all of these values. And now this pixel, which is very dark on this side, but is surrounded by more light pixels, uh, we can see that this resulting blurred value is really just kind of averaging all of those together into a single much lighter grayscale color. So in GLSL, we can do this pretty easily using a for loop. Um, so you can say for every neighbor, let's look up the neighbor color, uh, and then we can average those colors together and output the result. So this is an example of a convolution kernel, uh, which again, we're going to spend a lot more time on in our next lesson, because uh, that's going to be the predominant focus of kernels. So this lesson, we're going to focus on the other types of, of filters, which are going to be color grading, post-processing, and a little bit of domain distortion. And then we'll pick up convolution kernels in, like I said, the next chapter. So with that said, we're back at the beginning of our slides, which means it is time for Touch Designer. Now, before I jump in here and start talking uh, and kind of going through the instructional portion, I will mention again that the rest of this video is going to be for my Patreon subscribers only. So if you want to continue uh, this video, head on over to my Patreon. Uh, there's a link in the description. You can subscribe. You can get access to this full video. Also, the project file that has all of these working examples and the solutions to the exercises that I have went ahead and created for all of you. In addition, you'll get access to all of the tutorials that I've created so far, uh, which is about 100 or so videos covering tons of touch designer and other uh, new media art topics. So yeah, if you're interested in following along, which I strongly recommend, head over there, subscribe on Patreon, and finish the video uh, and see what you can learn. Thank you for following along so far. And before I go, I'll just note the reason for this is so that I can maintain really high quality in these courses. And because there is so much work, um, ensuring that the meat of the tutorial is from a Patreon subscribers allows me to make a little bit of money off of these educational materials, which is very important to me as an artist. So with all that said, head over to Patreon, subscribe, grab the file, and I will see you back in just one second. All right, so.